Hello everyone. Uh, today we will discuss chapter number five of ethical hacking course. Uh, this chapter is about port scanning. Uh, we have three agenda items, three things to discuss in this chapter, uh, starting with the definition of port scanning, types of port scanning and tools that we use in the port scanning. In the types, we will discuss mainly six different types of port scanning. There are many other types of port scanning as well, but we will specifically discuss six main types of port scanning and some tools that we can use for the port scanning. Uh, and there are different options and all that. So let's start with the definition of port scanning. As you guys are already familiar with the um, with the ports, like a computer has two types of port. One is the physical port. Second is the logical port. So for TCP IP related purposes, if you remember, we dis we actually use approximately 1000 ports for different uh, different services like for sending email, for for example, uh, if you remember FTP for uploading, downloading, HTTP or HTTPS. So for each particular functionality or service, we use a different port. And again, uh, finding the information about the port, like whether the port is open or closed or filtered, it's a very important information uh, for an ethical hacker or even for a black hat hacker as well. Because if the port is open, then we can actually penetrate to the system. We can access that system. If the port is closed, then we have to actually think different way, like we need to actually create a malware which can open that port and stuff like that. Anyway, so what is the definition of a port scanning? Port scanning is basically, uh, it's a method, method of finding, method of finding the services offered by the host by the host or you can say by the victim whatever you want to name it so services mean like uh, we, we because for each service it might be running on a specific port so in port scanning we actually find which port is open close and stuff like what's the status of the port that's basically called port scanning some of the tool they actually go beyond that just i mean rather than just giving you the port status they also actually run a vulnerability scan as well they also run a vulnerability scan as well vulnerability scan means uh, they have the preset of vulnerabilities like the pre-existing vulnerabilities uh, signatures and they actually try to see whether uh, the server or that host is vulnerable to any pre-existing vulnerability or not typically uh, the most widely used tool for port scanning is nmap that's the standardized tool uh, for port scanning ethical hackers black hat hackers they use that tool other than nmap uh, there are some exist uh, other tools like hping fping and uh, angry ip scanner angry ip scanner which you can also run on your windows machine as well h fping hping and uh, nmap these three tools they actually come with the kali linux and i mean you can uh, especially nmap it does come with a gui uh, which you guys can run on your windows machine it's called zenmap we will discuss some features of these particular tools in our third agenda item when we get to the tool. So what is the definition of port scanning? Method of finding services offered by a host or method of finding the ports, the status of the port uh, on, a, on a remote computer is called port scanning. So reports of the port scanning, like what are the different status of the port uh, ports? Port could be open, a port could be closed, or the third option is port could be filtered. So when you run a simple scan, you should see these three options. If the port is open, it means uh, that particular service is running. So you can say it allows access to the application. Allows access to the application or you can say the specific, specific service is running. For example, let's say if port FTP, like port 20 or 21 is open. So it means FTP service is running, okay, that uh, or you can download, upload or whatever you can do. Close mean, uh, it means that service is not running or you can say it don't allow access to application. Or you can say that particular application or service is not running, okay. Filtered mean, it says, it means the service or you can say that port is protected or behind a firewall. So it basically identifies uh, or it indicates the presence of a firewall if the port is 
filtered. So these are the only three options. When you run a scan, you will see only three options. Port will be either open, closed or filtered. There is no other option. Okay. Uh, next is the very important thing because if you wanna, if we, we, we need to understand uh, the different type of port scanning, we need to have good understanding of TCP handshaking. Uh, what is TCP handshaking? As you guys remember, uh, in our networking chapter, we discussed TCP packets or TCP protocol is basically a connection oriented. Connection oriented mean it establish a connection first before the bi-directional communication. What does it mean? Let me just give you a simple idea. For example, we have a TCP packet here. Let me make a small TCP packet. Okay, so let's say this is our TCP packet. I'll let, let me just make a simple TCP packet. So uh, just to avoid confusions. The TCP packet have plenty of things. It has the uh, source and destination port number. Let's say this is source port number. It has destination port number. Uh, then source IP address and destination IP address. Okay. Then it has, uh, <clears throat> uh, let's make a let it, then it has the sequence number. If you remember, the sequence number is basically to uh, reassemble the data. Uh, then we have, for example, different flags here. One of the flag is uh, sin flag. Then we have the uh, acknowledgement flag. Then we have urgent flag, push flag, fin flag. So it's like sin, acknowledgement, urgent, uh, push, fin. I think these are basically the different flags. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So there are mainly, mainly many, many different flags as well. So I'm just basically using these, these particular flags. Um, okay, so other than that, we also have the data as well. Data as well. So that's basically pretty much a simple TCP IP packet. TCP packet. Okay. Uh, of course, we do have MAC addresses and all that. I just made a simple, uh, uh, simple TCP packet for you guys for the better understanding. So let's say if this is your computer and this is the host and this host wants to communicate with this particular server. So you want to actually uh, start communication with the server. The first thing that will happen again, as you know, we because it's a TCP connection, we want to establish a TCP connection. So firstly, there will be a three way handshake. So first of all, there will be a three way handshake and then the communication will occur. So what will happen? So for example, let's say uh, this computer, this is a client, it wants to establish a connection. So first of all, it will send a packet with SYN. So what does it mean? It means it will send this particular packet to uh, to server. Like the packet will be like this. The packet, let me just make it simple. So packet will have a sequence number. Okay, sequence number. Packet will have these particular flags. All these flag, sin flag, acknowledgement flag, urgent, push, fin, and reset, RST. These flags, okay? plus the data, I mean, and again, if you are basically establish a connection, so there will be no data, like it's an empty packet with sequence number and these particular flag. So since sequence number, again, sequence number can never be zero. Sequence number is basically starting of the communication, like start packet. So sequence number here will be, let's say the sequence number is, because we just started, it's one. So it's a randomly picked value because we just established a connection. Now what will happen again here, how the packet will look like. This particular flag will be one, like this will be on, rest of the flags will be zero, zero, like these flags will be off. Okay, so with sender, like client will send a packet to server with only sin flag on and sequence number, let's say I randomly pick one. When server will receive this packet, because server is on, server will respond it with sin acknowledgement and the sequence number, or you can say the acknowledgement number two. What does it mean? Acknowledgement number two means I have received your sync packet and I know that I'm expecting the uh, acknowledgement or the next sequence number is two because previous sequence number is one. So next, I know that I have acknowledged your packet one and I have I expect the next packet is gonna be two. So now what, what does it mean? It means they will, they will send you the packet, this particular packet with two flags on, sync flag on, 
and the acknowledgement flag on. Rest of the flag will be zero. There is RST as well, RST flag. Rest of the flags will be zero. So when you will receive that, you will respond back with the acknowledgement flag, like a packet, like the complete packet with just this flag on, rest of the flag will be zero, 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 like zero. And again, you can say the sequence number is two because I mean the previous sequence number is one. So you just send the sequence two. Now, for example, after these three hand handshaking, three way handshaking, what happened? The connection has established. Like you send them and ask them, are you up? They responded you back. Yes, I am up. And I have, I, I have acknowledged your sequence number one. No, I'm expecting the next is sequence number two. Then you respond back, great, I'm also up and let's start communication. So this is a three-way handshaking process, okay? TCP connection. Now connection is established. Now you can actually start communicating. Let's say they can send you the data, you can send them, send them the data. Or for example, you don't wanna send any data, just establish a connection and you wanna terminate. So in order to terminate, what will happen? You will send the packet, let's say again the packet with fin flag on and you will say the sequence number was two and I'm signing out again the packet is right here like this flag will be on rest of the flag will be zero fin mean finish of the communication once you said fin they will also send you a packet with fin okay they will send the packet with fin like finish like communication is done rest of the flag will be zero no session will be terminated so this is basically how a communication occurs a TCP connection actually established. Now let's let's understand over uh, port scanning, like the type of port scanning, how, uh, what are the different options for the port scanning and all. So for the port scanning, uh, what exactly happens? In order to do port scanning, what we do? Security uh, professionals, they create a packet. They create this kind of TCP packet and send that packet to server. Again, this is a TCP packet, just like this kind of packet with different flags on, off and all that stuff. They actually send these particular TCP packet to the server. Typically, to you can send this packet to a specific port if you want to specifically find with whether this port is open or closed. Or you can send the packet to all the ports, all 1000 port of the server. So what will happen when the packet will be received by the server on a specific port or all the ports, they will start responding back to you. So you can actually collect different information. Let's say you can find operating system detail or you can find whether the host is up or not. Uh, you can see, for example, let's say whether the, it is protected with a firewall. I mean, depending upon what kind of information you need, we actually manipulate the packet. So we actually play with the packet, craft the packet and just play with that. Um, so basically, if you wanna write down uh, the definition for that, so basically, when the security professionals, when the security professionals create, or you can say craft a packet, create a TCP packet, then they can choose, they can choose uh, which of the fields which of the fields, um, which of the specific, they can choose to, okay, they can choose to set which of the field helps to initiate the response from the host. Okay, so like you can actually set any flag and it will initiate different service and you can find out different kind of data or different kind of information. Uh, some people, if you wanna actually run, uh, for example, if you don't want to be exposed, if you want if you want to be hidden from the uh, IDS intrusion detection system, so we actually run a scan called stealth scan. So what is a stealth scan? Stealth scan is basically the victim victim cannot track or you can say cannot see the scan scanner in fact like scanner or you can say attacker okay they cannot see whether somebody ran a scan and who ran the scan and all that such scan is called stealth scan if you don't want to be 
expose you want to be hidden uh, from IDS intrusion detection system so it's called stealth scan it will not basically give any alerts or will not create any intrusions so now there are six types of scans that we talked about there is sin scan uh, we have the connect scan null scan fin scan Christmas scan acknowledgement scan let's let's talk about all these so first is the sin scan in sin scan what happens it's first of all it is a stealth scan a stealth scan uh, uh, why it's a stealth scan? Because since attacker attacker does not complete three-way handshake handshake okay three-way handshake um, in the stealth scan, what exactly happened? Let me let me just explain to you guys again. What we do is we can actually send this this uh, sin scan. Uh, to all the ports like we actually we are finding the status of the port whether the port is open or port is closed or port is protected with a filter or it's a filtered po uh, port like protected with a firewall so what exactly we do here uh, what we do in the sin scan is let's say this is the attacker so what attacker will do and let's say this is the victim so attacker will send the sin packet the the packet with the sin flag on remember like this thing Attacker will actually send a packet with just sin flag on. So, for example, this is your victim. Victim has received this sin packet, uh, the packet with sin. If the if that particular port is closed, let's say you are basically scanning, for example, port 80, or let's say you are scanning all the ports. For example, if you scan port 80, for example. So, if you send a sin packet to port 80, and if the server response come RST reset, like you got a packet. Uh, you got a package with this reset flag on rest of the flags are zero. What does it mean? It means that particular port is closed Okay, for example, let's say if you send sin packet Again, it will not run further To the server and if they respond you back with sin acknowledgement like the Handshaking they are basically try to do handshaking sin acknowledgement what will happen what receiver will do receiver will actually send or attacker will send rst like terminate the session like forget about it i don't want to establish connection so handshake will not they will not let the handshake complete now what will happen uh since you have received sin acknowledgement and you just send a sin packet so what will happen it means the port is open okay and for example let's say if you send a sin packet and if they don't send any response it means port is filtered so no response port will filter. Please remember they don't complete the handshaking. So it's called a stealth scan. Uh, it will not create any intrusion, nothing like that. So if you send a SYN packet, like a packet with a SYN flag on, if the response come RST, it means uh, port is closed. If you send a SYN packet to a specific port and respond, they, they start responding with SYN acknowledgement. So attacker will send a reset, like terminate the session because we got the information like it is open. Uh, and for example, if you send a SYN packet, they don't respond. It means it is filtered, like protected with a firewall. Next is the connect scan. Connect scan, uh, it's not a stealth scan. And uh, for example, if skin, a SYN scan is not possible, not possible to launch, the command for SYN flag uh, scan is, we will run that. Let's say nmap minus ss, it is SYN scan. Space, let's say if you want to specifically uh, find out port, port P2021, let's say you want to scan these two ports and www, whatever the website is. Okay, that's the uh, two for the SYN scan. For connect scan, what exactly happens? For example, again, connect, uh, for example, if SYN scan is not an option, not available, then we actually do the connect scan, not stealth, please remember, it is not stealth. So uh, it, it might uh, create intrusions or receiver. It's a bit risky because we complete the three-way handshake. Not uh, still because we complete three-way handshake. Okay. And again, we send a packet with a SYN flag on. Okay. Like uh, let's say this is attacker. And for example, this is your victim or the system you want to scan. So attacker, let's say you want to scan port 80 again, or maybe the whole system, it up, it's basically up to you. So for example, now you send a SYN packet. Now, for example, if this system is on, they will respond you back with SYN acknowledgement. 
Once they will respond you back with send acknowledgement, you will send the acknowledgement. Okay, like I, I know that like you send, are you up? They respond, yes, we are up. And then they, you will respond it back. Hey, okay, great. So now what happened actually? Three way handshaking is uh, got completed. Once it got completed, so they might send you a data, like maybe the HTTP website or whatever you requested for. Once they send you the data, attacker will send the reset, like kill the connection, like never mind, I don't need anything. So since handshaking is completed, so it's not a stealth, you can be detected, uh, the scan can be detected. And uh, what will happen again, once they will send you the data, acknowledgement, it means port is open. Again, if the port was closed, so what will happen? You will send SYN and you will receive a reset. If you receive a reset, it means port will be closed. Okay. It's quite a risky kind of scan, in fact. So most of the people, they don't actually go for connect scan. Next is the null scan. Null scan is also a most widely used scan. Again, we uh, use null scan to find port status, port open or close. In null scan, what happens? In null scan, attackers, what they do is they actually send a packet, let's say this packet. And as you know, in the packet, we have six different flags. We have uh, sin, we have urgent, we have push, RST, we have uh, acknowledgement, and we have fin, these different six flags. And then we have here, for example, the sequence number data and all. So in null scan, what happens? Attackers send the packet, like this is attacker, Attacker will send the packet, like a packet, TCP packet with no flag on. Like there would be a sequence number, but no flag will be on, like there will be all zeros. All flags are zero, there will be no packet. So what will happen actually, the victim will get confused because it's a violation of TCP rules. Violation of TCP rule because one of the flag has to be on, which will indicate or which tells the receiver that this is basically what is inside the packet. So now what will happen again, if the uh, none of the packet will be on, what will happen? This server will get confused, okay? If the server will get confused, you have sent the packet, TCP packet, they will, no, they will send you no response. If there will be no response, it means port is open. So why port is open? Because you sent something wrong, like invalid, null scan, like there is nothing, no, no, uh, no flag is set and Technically or as technically speaking for TCP rules, according to TCP rules, one of the flag has to be set. So you send the packet with no flag on, what will happen? They will no respond you back because they will get confused what to respond and what you are asking. So what will happen again? If no response, it means port is open. And for example, if they respond you back with RST, like a packet with RST flag on, it means port is closed. That's basically the null scan. Uh, the next is the fin, fin scan. Fin scan is again uh, very similar. In fin scan, what happens actually, again the packet, attacker will send the packet. Again, we have six flags, sin, uh, acknowledgement, we have urgent, we have push, we have reset, uh, what else, we have fin. So, and then let's say sequence number data. So attacker, this is attacker again and that's over server. So attacker will send a packet, I mean, packet with, with this flag on, fin flag on, like rest of the flags are zero, but fin flag is on. So again, this is a violation of TCP rule. What is a violation? Like there is no connection, like there was no connection and you send a TCP packet to finish. Like there was no connection, what to finish? So again, the, uh, the server will get confused. Hey, what are you doing? Like what you are doing, what you are asking? Like there was no connection and you say, hey, finish, you're done. Like all the way, you were not communicating anything and you just send a packet and say, hey, finish. What does it mean? No sense. So what will happen? Server will send no response. If the port is on, open. If the port is open, so it means they will not send you any response. If uh, no response, it means port is open. Again, if it is closed, they will send you a packet with RST, reset. So if it is reset, it means port is closed. Next type of scan is called Christmas scan. Uh, we call it a Christmas scan, again, to find open port and closed port, what exactly happens? Again, just like other, we have the flags. Let me draw the flag so you will not get confused. So we have sin, sin acknowledgement, ACK, 
urgent push reset and fin so now what's going to happen in this particular uh, scan attacker actually craft a packet and in this packet attacker just on three particular flag one of the flag is push then attacker turn on the flag uh, urgent urg and fin so attacker send a packet with these flags on fin urgent and uh, push so why we call it christmas because it looks like something like that i mean if you organize in a proper way so it look like one let's say this is on zero one zero one zero like light on off on off something like that that's why we call it christmas scan so what happens actually attackers send the packet this is attacker again attackers send the packet to victim with the flag push urgent and fin again it's an invalid packet like you send the packet and you're saying push mean like it, it means hey uh whatever you have previously in the buffer push it to the next buffer and then you're saying it is really urgent come on do it and then you say hey you're finished what does it mean it's it's kind of nonsense kind of thing so receiver will see or the server will say it's kind of a nonsense packet so what will happen if the port is open they will actually send no response if no response it means port is open and if they send you again rst okay if they send you rst so what does it mean it means the port is closed Okay, the last type of scan is the X scan. We use X scan to detect the firewall. Detection of firewall. Okay, so what we do in the X scan? Again, the packet will send a packet like with X flag on and send the sequence zero. So all of a sudden, what happened? This is the attacker and this is basically the width so they didn't send you anything it's completely nonsense again tcp violation rule violation like you didn't send any sync request they didn't reply to your sync acknowledgement and all of a sudden you send a packet of acknowledgement and sync uh, sequence zero sequence zero can never be there of course sequence always start with one now what will happen when the receiver will receive that hey what kind of acknowledgement do you send me i didn't send you any sync acknowledgement nothing like that what this acknowledgement is for so again, it will get confused uh, if the port is open and if it is protected with a firewall, what will happen? They will actually send you no response or they will actually send you RST, reset. I don't know, like send the, uh, restart the conversation, re restart it, like send me the sync packet, send, then I will send you the sync request and then you can send the acknowledgement. So what will happen uh, if no response of RST, it means it means it is the presence of a firewall. Okay. Um, so the last thing is the uh, port scanning tools. There are plenty of port scanning tools that we uh, we will use. In fact, one of the port scanning tool, the standardized port scanning tool is Nmap. Standard tool for port scanning and uh, the GUI of port, uh, Nmap is Zenmap. Okay, it's basically a GUI, much much easier uh, to use, and you can also run on your Windows machine as well. So it is a standardized port scanning tool port scanner port scanning tool another one is open vas open vas uh, it gives you plenty of things like you can scan the port and you can also find vulnerabilities in the system so and again the thing is for the open vas you have to actually download or run a client in your local computer like it will download the uh, the interface of open vas on your local host and you can actually select the program and run the services so open vas is basically a open source utility it's an open source utility that allows you to run programs like programs or you can say commands um, which can be can be selected from user interface and that user interface will be running on your local host ping sweep is basically uh, it's a it's technique in fact it's not basically a tool it's a technique ping sweep sweep uh, which basically identifies the uh, ip addresses ip addresses belong to an active host okay uh, then we have fping tool this is basically one of the tool which come with kali linux 
it come with your Kali Linux and um, uh, you can actually uh, you can actually send the ping packet to multiple IP addresses multiple IP addresses and uh, other than that of course you can actually upload a text file as well upload a text file for example what does it mean it means let's say you have a text file you can write down all the IP addresses which you want to scan upload the file and it will scan or send a ping packet to all those uh, those uh, IP addresses listed there then we have hping which is basically an advanced port scanning tool port scanner advanced port scanner it allows you to actually craft packets by your own so you can actually craft the packets by your own as well by using hping um the last thing is the scripting uh i hope uh, you guys are already familiar with scripting bad scripting bad scripting and all that so what is basically this scripting means so scripting is basically uh we use scripting to automate automate the tasks automate the tasks uh you can say uh i mean it saves you a lot of time it it's what exactly these scripts are so these scripts are basically uh, you can write down the script on the text file and what are the text file like you can actually write down the commands like you can write down the command and set those command uh, to automatically run whenever anybody run the script so basically you can run those particular commands through your command from terminal but the problem with the terminal is you have to run the command one by one by writing down on the script what happens in the on the text file uh, you can actually change their extension like shell script for example let's say dot vbs script for example dot bat script bat script anything like that and these text files are basically they include list of commands these list of command that can uh, set to run automatically automatically when someone executes executes the the file okay the uh, the script in fact uh, in these scripting languages you can do everything like it offers you to run to allow you to do for a uh, for loop you can actually run a task for plenty of uh, plenty of times uh, conditional statements you can use the conditional statements everything whatever you you can actually do with the um, with your python c++ so you can do everything with these scripting languages uh, one of the loop is like one of the loops are for loop for loop is basically if you want to repeat a test for a specific amount of time another loop is the do loop do loop is it will do the main task but what will happen if you use a do loop there will be unlimited unlimited iterations so it will do the task as i mean it will keep doing the task unless you put a while loop while loop basically avoid it uh, to become uh, unlimited iterations like it will restrict to like whenever I mean, you can put a condition here let's say do it for the 10 times something like that exactly i mean it does the same thing as of the for loop but it actually do first and then check the condition in the for loop it actually checks the condition and keep then it will do that but in do while loop it will do check the condition do and check the condition in for loop it will firstly check the condition and do it after doing that again check the condition and do it we will discuss that when we get to scripting again to write down these script there are plenty of editors that come with linux uh, one of the editor is vim uh, vi we have leafpad we have uh, uh, for Linux Nano, there are plenty of editors that you can use to write down these particular scripts. So in our in our lab, uh, we will we will definitely use these uh, uh, editors to to actually come up with that stuff. So if anybody will have any questions, uh, please do let me know. We can discuss that in our class as well. Thank you.